to sing a song today about probably the most outrageous and famous jailbreak in the history of the world, and certainly Irish people and Irish Americans, uh, including myself, uh, feel that it is. The song is called The Catalpa. Uh, it's a long, complicated story, and it starts in Ireland in the 1860s, uh, when an uprising uh, took place. Uh, many of the participants in the uprising actually had served in the British Army uh, and were secretly plotting uh, to strike for Irish freedom. Uh, they were known as the Fenians, members of the Irish Fenian Brotherhood, or the Irish Republican Brotherhood more accurately. Uh, and uh, they were captured uh, and over 60 of them were transported uh, to Australia. Many others were exiled, uh, some to England and some to America. Um, but the most uh, serious offenders in the eyes of the British were transported to Australia and a number of them ended up uh, serving life sentences uh, in Fremantle Jail, literally at that time the edge of the earth, an impregnable fortress uh, of a prison. Uh, and uh, that was that. But one of the prisoners escaped uh, with the aid uh, of a local priest and ended up in Boston. And his name was John Boyle O'Reilly. And another uh, of, of that organization ended up in England and finally ended up in America, a man called John Devoy. Uh, and uh, he got uh, a letter, a very moving letter, from a, a, a man, James Wilson, who was a friend of his and one of uh, the group that became known later as the Fremantle Six, begging him to take some action, saying that life wasn't worth living in this uh, penal colony with hard labor and, and absolutely no future envisaged at all. So with John Boyle O'Reilly's help, a lot of funds were raised and uh, a ship was commissioned uh, in New Bedford, uh, in, in New England. Uh, and a captain was engaged, a man called George Anthony. He was a retired Yankee ship's captain uh, and not really connected to, to anything Irish, but became convinced uh, that the prisoners in Australia were political prisoners and that there were human rights involved. So the Catalpa uh, was fitted as a whaling ship uh, and uh, it sailed the seas for a while and became recognized. And then, in the most daring plot imaginable, it sailed off to Australia uh, with a crew stopping on the way in the Azores. And the whole idea was to free six of the Fenian prisoners. And there were Thomas Dara, Martin Hogan, uh, Michael Harrington, uh, Thomas Hassett, and Robert Cranston, in addition to James Wilson. Uh, and word uh, of, of the the potential rescue, the escape, was carried by very patriotic Irish gentlemen, uh, a couple of them, in, in particular a man called John Breslin, who posed as a wealthy businessman and, and uh, got the confidence of the governor of Western Australia uh, and was taken on a tour of the prison uh, and decided that it was indeed impregnable and that uh, if there was to be any escape that the prisoners in question had to be given an outdoor detail. Well, eventually it all happened and, and the ship arrived uh, in and, and uh, the rescue was uh, set for April 1876. Eventually it did take place on the 17th of April 1876, but it was a complicated venture. Uh, the prisoners arrived in Rockingham, about 20 kilometers away uh, from Fremantle. Now, a lot of the, the uh, prison brass were distracted by a big regatta going on at the time, the Perth Regatta. Uh, and that was a very festive occasion. So their sights weren't, shall we say, on the prison in that particular day, and full advantage was taken. There were complications. Uh, uh, a small boat was, uh, was obtained by George Anthony to take the, the Fremantle Six uh, out to the Catalpa, which was moored outside the three mile limit in international waters. But word got out uh, and the, there, were, the, there were pursuits. Uh, in particular uh, by a, a, a steamer called the Georgette. Now, in a strange twist of fate, 
that Georgette was captained by a man called Captain O'Grady, uh, who was an acquaintance of George Antony. I mean, even then, it was a small world, uh, to use the phrase. Uh, and George Antony uh, had actually had, had a, a meal with Captain O'Grady a few days before the daring rescue. So the Georgette pursued uh, on two occasions. It ran out of fuel the first time, and uh, the Catalpa was becalmed uh, and couldn't move because there was no wind. Uh, and it approached twice and, uh, and, and attempted to board the Catalpa, uh, at which point uh, George Antony raised the Stars and Stripes flag and, and said, look, if you're going to attack this ship, you're, atta you're declaring war on America. And Captain O'Grady backed off after firing a, a shot across the bows of the Catalpa. And the escape was made. And off to the Indian Ocean uh, they went. And then in, in uh, August the 18th, uh, that same year, they arrived to a tumultuous welcome in New York City. One of the great escapes of all time. The Catalpa first surfaces in Australian publications uh, around 1909, but there's actually an earlier version in a publication that was a very minority publication uh, as the weekly record of the Catholic Irish in Australia uh, published in Perth. And uh, it was in 1903 that a, a song was published called The Fenians Rescue, which is essentially the Catalpa. I first heard the song, The Catalpa, sung by a man called Paul Jensen from Sydney in the Vorsteiner Stuben pub in Bangkok. Uh, we used to have weekly sessions there uh, back around 2003 and 2004. And he sang a version of the song. That's when I first heard it, but then I forgot all about it. But I got a grant from the Pew Foundation in Philadelphia to go to Canberra and uh, look there for Irish uh, Australian songs. Uh, and it was something I'd wanted to do for a long time anyway. So off I went uh, to the National Library in Canberra, sleepy Canberra, and spent a week there. And I started uh, to do research uh, in the National Library on various songs that might have had some kind of an Irish theme, obviously songs of transportation to Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania, or to Australia, or the kind of work that the Irish did when they got there. A lot of it involved sheep droving and so on, um, and songs about the bush. Um, but I kept coming across the name Ron Edwards. Uh, and I went to the librarian more than once and asked about Ron Edwards and uh, the prodigious collections of songs that he obviously had been involved in in his life. And I asked one question to Manny and she said, look, uh, why don't you contact him? And I said, he's still alive? She said, absolutely. He's well on in years. Uh, she said, he's a very, very uh, uh, remarkable man and we're in touch with him all the time. And I said, why? She said, because we're always in dispute with him. Uh, because uh, every author in Australia is supposed to provide a free copy of uh, their books uh, to the National Library. And he won't do that. He wants us to pay for his books. And I said, he sounds like my kind of fellow. So anyway, uh, she gave me his telephone number uh, and I called him up and I introduced myself uh, and said that I was a folklorist and a student of Professor Kenneth Goldstein. And he said, ah, Professor Kenneth Goldstein, he said, a lovely man. He said, why don't you come up and visit me? And I, I said, I will, of course. And I said, when will I come? He said, come on Monday. Now that was Friday and I finished my stint there and I flew from Canberra down to Sydney and then took the four hour flight up to Cairns in Queensland and landed there on a Saturday and spent the day in a small hotel and went out to see the Great Barrier Reef. And then on Monday morning, he picked me up at his wife Anne's craft store in Cairns and drove me up to Corunda to the rainforest. And I had a wonderful day with Ron Edwards and I learned the story, generally speaking, of his life. He'd been involved in folklore collecting, all sorts of antiquarian pursuits all his life, had founded uh, the Ram Skull Press, in Melbourne many years beforehand and published prodigiously over 300 books and God knows how many articles. He was also an expert uh, artist and he painted beautifully everywhere he went. Uh, he had lithographs and he was as famous for that as anything else. He was also an expert in mud house building um, and uh, mud houses of course were very common in the world in Ireland 
before the famine, most of the houses were made of, of wattle and clay, mud houses. And if you go to towns like Santa Fe in New Mexico, you'll see adobe houses everywhere. And adobe, of course, is a kind of mud building. Um, and uh, he was expert in that as well. In fact, he had a little guest house uh, made uh, of mud. It was a lovely, comfortable place, and that's where I was put for the night. And then I had dinner with him and Anne in the main house, about 50 metres away. And uh, and uh, it was a lovely evening, uh, chatting about this and that, about Kenny Goldstein, of course, about folklore, about his own mission in collecting folk songs in Australia, his prodigious collection, which he had amassed. And he showed me his printing press. He had actually his own printing press. Never an unpublished thought, you might say. And that's one of the reasons he was in contact with the National Library. Some of his publications, he only published a very limited number, maybe even 10 or 20 of his trip to New Guinea, for instance. And, and that would be a little book. And not too many people, I suppose, would, would buy that book. But I had a great night with him and he gave me his version uh, uh, that he had uh, in the big book of Australian folk songs of uh, the Catalpa and I treasured it. And then it was an interesting walk. Uh, we, we spent uh, uh, many hours that evening and then he gave me a flashlight to walk the 50 meters to my mud house. And he said, now you're gonna to have to be careful, he said. And I said, why? He said, a lot of snakes around here, he said. And they come out at nighttime. He said, however, if you get a snake bite, he said, most of them, uh, you'll probably recover from you. They're, they're, they're not venomous snakes. He said, what you really have to look out for, he said, is the toad shit. I said, why? He said, if you slip on the toad shit and go down, the spiders will get you and then we can't help you. Well, I tell you, it was one of the most interesting 50 meters uh, that I ever walked in my life. I found out later he was joshing me a bit because the last person who died from a, a venomous spider bite had been 10 years previously, but I didn't know that on the night. So I left Ron and uh, he died the following year. I never saw him again, but I treasured the song, the Catalpa. And uh, it, it, it memorializes, keeps alive the memory of this extraordinary uh, jailbreak, the, the like of which had never happened uh, before. And it links uh, Ireland and Australia and America, Irish America, in a very unique and profound way. So I'm delighted to sing that song for you today. And I'm going to be doing it with Athena Turgis in Tuscany, Italy, John Doyle in, uh, in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and Brenda Castles in Dublin, the Catalpa. Come all you screw orders and jailers, remember Perth Regatta Day. Take care of the rest of your fiends, or the Yankees will steal them away. A noble brave ship, the Catalpa, set out for New Bedford one day. She sailed off to Western Australia and took six. had served there and seven long more had to stay for defending their country old Ireland they were chained and transported away so come on you screw orders and jailers remember her three gods a day take care of the rest of your females or the Yankees will steal them away in Western Australia Till their hair had begun to turn grey Till a brave whaling ship and commander Came out here and stole them away Now all the Perth boats were racing And making short tacks for the spot But the Yankee sailed into Fremantle And took the best prize of the lot so come all you screw orders and jailers, remember Perth we got a day. Take care of the rest of your fiends, or the Yankees will steal them away. With guns ready, intending the Yankee to take. But she hoisted the star spangled banner and left the 
Georgia in their way. So remember those six Fingin heroes who sailed over to America and join in the toast to the bravery of the Yankees that stole them away. So come all these two orders and jailers, remember Perth we got a Landed safe in New York Harbor, and the crowd there to greet them did cry. So let's hoist up the green flag and shamrock, for old Ireland we'll fight or we'll die. So come on, you screw orders and jailers, remember birds we got a day. Take care of the rest of your fiends, or the Yankees will steal them away. Yankees will steal them away.